Okay, in the last video, I showed you how to use this filter-based feature selection tool to decide uh, which of your attributes or independent variables you want to include in your model. This is a, a decent technique for doing that, but I have um, a couple others I like better. Let's start with one of them. I'm going to delete this out of my model, and you may notice that I actually brought back in the select columns and data set because I ended up, uh, for another example in class, updating my bike buyers back to the version that included all variables again. So uh, if you've been following along with these videos, you know I'm just making sure that I have only those uh, variables that the original variables, not any of these numeric versions of the independent variables, at least, that I created when we were doing all this in Excel. And I don't need ID. And for now, since I'm using a linear regression, my independent variable is the numeric version of purchase bike. So I'm leaving the, the text version that says yes or no out of the model here. Anyway, uh, what I want you to select instead uh, before we use filter-based feature selection, now I want you to grab permutation feature importance. So, uh, by the way, this Fisher linear discriminant analysis, we use this for uh, categorical dependent variables. We're going to ignore that one for now. Plus, there's some other te techniques I like better, so I'm not even going to cover that one, at least yet. So, for now, grab permutation feature importance and pull it here onto the page. So, uh, this one we're going to use a little bit differently. Um, I'm going to... Let's see here. I actually need to run this off of a trained model. So what I'm going to do is, is uh, use this one to test the importance of different what they call features or independent variables. And then I'll use the results from this to come up here and select the columns in the data set, only the ones that I care about. So again, this is like filter-based feature selection where I'm uh, reducing, I'm trying to reduce the number of overall variables in my, independent variables in my model to prevent overfitting. Overfitting means that I have too many variables for the number of cases, which causes us to come up with a prediction that's too specific to the subsample or the subpopulation that we have and uh, likely to be uh, a poorer, uh, it, it perform worse when we're uh, using and applying it to future samples or future populations. So, Again, that's what we're trying to accomplish here with these tools. Permutation feature importance. Grab a line from trained model, pull it in here to the green dot because it needs to run off of that. Um, you'll see why in a moment. Also, it basically what this does is it relies on some test data that's randomly selected, which is why we're going to grab this uh, from our split data. Remember, we have our training data and our testing data. Grab another line from the testing data, from split data, and pull it in here to the other side of feature importance. I know this is getting kind of complicated now. Anyway, and we're going to run this. So let's go ahead and run it, and I'll talk while that's running. All right, there we go. So the way this works is it's going to grab a bunch of subsamples of our test data, smaller samples of that data, and it's going to calculate um, Actually, I meant to set that first. It's going to calculate uh, one of a number of outcome variables. If it's a regression model like what we have, the outcome or the evaluation variables are things like root mean square uh, error, um, coefficient of determination, or R squared. And it's going to look at each of those independent variables and calculate a bunch of different um, R squareds, if that's what we select uh, for that variable, and see how much the R squared changes for different Oh, see, it's mad at me because I forgot to select which metric I want to use for uh, measuring the performance of each variable. If it's a classification model, um, I don't think we've covered these yet, so let's ignore those. But regression gives us several um, evaluation measures. I've been typically going by coefficient of determination or R squared, so we'll select that one. Let me run this one more time. Run selected. There we go. So it's going to grab a bunch of subsamples, calculate R squared for each of those subsamples when predicting the dependent variable. Um, that's why it needs to come off of trained models. It needs to know what the dependent variable is, uh, purchase bike numeric. And then it's going to give us an outcome of how much each of those dependent variables it fills are contributing to the R squared. So this is not the same as taking the actual R squared we got from our evaluate model right here and simply slicing it up by each variable. But it's kind of like that. Um, let me pull this up again. So what this is saying here is that cars, the number of cars they have is the biggest contributor to overall R squared. 
let's, uh, there we go. Click on that. So I have um, big R squared improvement there with marital status, commute distance, children, region occupation. I would even keep income and maybe homeowner, but look, as we start to include education, gender, and age, it starts dropping off rapidly. And this is saying that we have right here uh, four different variables that are contributing 0 0.00013 to 0 0.012. So basically what it's suggesting here is there's probably these four variables that we can get rid of entirely and still have the same basic R squared without overfitting too much. So uh, it's not giving us any hard and fast rules as to where we should draw that line. That's still up to you as the data scientist. But what I want to draw your attention to here is we're changing the focus from looking at the p-values of coefficients to actual effect size. So recall back here when we first I first showed you this train model and we viewed it, it gave us these regression weights, including the intercept here that it calls bias. And you may have noticed or remember that Although it does give us the coefficient, it's not giving us the p-value for each coefficient like we got when we ran the linear multiple regression in Excel. That's because p-value is falling out of favor uh, with data scientists because uh, in this new era of big data, as long as I get enough data, enough records or cases, I can find a significant p-value for every single one of these that's not zero. Even income right here with this tiny coefficient, I can get a... Uh, a significant p-value for that as long as I have enough records. So the focus has changed and, 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 and we no longer even look at p-value when we train a model. Rather, I use something like this to say, okay, uh, instead of looking at p-value, let's look at how much each of them is contributing to the actual effect. Rather than is it statistically significant, is it practically significant? Is it, significant? Is it actually improving? How much is it improving my actual prediction? So that's what this permutation feature importance uh, technique is. It's uh, probably a better one um, or more useful, I would say, uh, absolutely more useful than the uh, filter-based feature selection tool across most cases, Not maybe not in every situation. Maybe there's something I can't think of. Um, but that's basically how I'd use it. So I'd look at this, say, all right, um, I am going to... Uh, kill these last four variables that are making very little difference income, homeowner, education, gender. Let me uh, first run this selected. Let's see what my, P value, my overall R squared is based on including all of those variables. Give it a second. Let's pause this. Okay, uh, evaluation results. Visualize. So my R squared here is 6.7%. So again, this is uh, based on my uh, training data. Oh, you know what? Here's why my R squared is so different. In a previous video, I was wondering why it was so different. I forgot here my split data to change this to 70%, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, like I used to have. Let me run this one more time real quick. I'll pause the video while that runs. Okay, let's check this one out now should be closer to that R squared of 10, yep, 10% 10 like we were getting before. Okay, so as you can tell, when we were looking at this feature importance, um, these add up to more than 10%, and there that's uh, more accurate. So it, it's it's kind of a an estimate based on a whole bunch of subsamples, so it's not going to be exactly the same as what we were getting before. But anyway, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in and remove age, gender, children, homeowner. Let me click on this once more since I changed some things a bit. Oh, now it's giving us five that it thinks are really not that important. And you can see that right here. It drops significantly from occupation down to education, 0.02. Um, so let's go ahead and take out everything. Education, homeowner, children, gender, age. Education, homeowner, education, homeowner, children. I think it was gender, yeah, age. Okay, now we're down to one, two, three, four, five, six independent variables, one dependent variable. Let's rerun this model and see how much our actual um, R squared changed. So I'll pause this while well, I'll run it and then uh, pause it. Okay, so now after taking that out, let's see what we got. Look at that. 
barely reduce the R squared at all. So I like this tool. It's a great one for being able to uh, um, minimize the potential for overfitting and reducing the number of dimensions in our model and still maintain a really nice R squared.